Okay. Yes, good morning once again. We are good to go. Hello. Are you ready for meditation? I saw how you were meditating earlier. <laughs> you weren't really. Okay, please take a comfortable seat. You can rest your hand on your lap. Let your eyes close if you like. Find your way to the place where you feel like you can be relatively still and supported. Lengthen up through the crown of your skull and lift at the base of your skull also. And try to sit a little bit more into the back hemisphere of your body. Welcome the possibility that however you're showing up for class, whatever you brought with you from your sleep or your weekend or thoughts, activities, conversations, food choices, whatever that has been, we can open up to the possibility that when we organize the prana in the body, there is an easeful return to the Brahma Viharas, to that which is natural and native within you. Welcome your breath to begin deepening and getting more smooth. Include smoothness in the transition at the top of the inhale, the bottom of the exhale, and how you're kind of turning the inhale into the exhale and how the exhale will become the inhale. Our practice this morning help us to realign with the natural intelligence of the body. And may we experience this quality of equanimity, upekshanam, that helps us to have all of the other Brahma Viharas also be possible. So please raise your hand to your heart. A couple of weeks ago, I said that equanimity is the most difficult of the Brahma Viharas. I still have that sense. It's the hardest one for us to practice. And at the same time, that experience of equanimity gives us the openness for also compassion, loving kindness, appreciative joy to come very naturally through. This morning, we'll chant Asatama Satkamaya. Let's begin. Om Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Great Yodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sakamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mridyodama Amritam Gamaya 
Asatoma Sarkamaya Amasoma Jyotir Gamaya Red Yorma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om, Shri Guru Pyo Namaha, Hari Om. So you may bow your head to your heart, release your hands, sitting up tall, turn your palms face out and inhale so that the arms move at the pace of the breath. At the top of the inhale, look up. Exhale, hands to your heart, squeeze the lower belly towards the end of your exhalation. Clasp your hands, please. Inhale, send the arms forward. Exhale, squeeze your hands towards your heart, squeeze the upper back. Inhale, hands down, forward and up all the way. Exhale, squeeze the hands down behind your head, squeeze the upper back, open your chest. Inhale, raise up and look up. And exhale, push out. As you press out, prepare to clasp your hands at the small of your back. And as you do that, inhale, little sitting back bend, open. And exhale, bring your chin towards your throat, squeeze the arms back. And then one more time, inhale to look up. And exhale, release your hands to your knees. So that's opening up this Vayu we call Vyana Vayu, the circulatory Vayu. Okay, we're gonna add to that sequence. So please clasp your hands. Inhale to go up. Exhale, side bend to your left. Keep your right hip grounded. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, side bend to your right, keeping your left hip grounded. Inhale, rise up, look up if you like. Exhale, bring your hands down behind your head, place the pinkies at the base of the skull. Inhale, elbows forward and up. And then exhale, elbows wide. Inhale, twist to your right. Exhale to center, elbows wide. And then inhale, twist to your left. Bring your right elbow forward, your left elbow up. Exhale to center, elbows wide. Inhale, press up and look up. Now exhale, push out to the sides of your room, just come about to shoulder height, and then interlace your fingers and try to squeeze the shoulders back, raise your arms back. This is your inhale. Exhale, twist right. Inhale to center. This is working on Vyana Vayu. Squeeze the upper back as you exhale, twist left. Inhale to center. And exhale, release your hands out over your knees. Notice the temperature that goes down your arms. Mm -hmm. 
Another practice here for awakening this value, it's called the circulatory value or Vyana value. It's associated with the heart center and the chest. So we're gonna inhale the hands up and exhale to pull them down. You are exercising the upper back. You're also exercising the breath, kind of expelling. So from sleep to upright. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, inhale up. Exhale, push out. Rest your hands in your lap. We're going to repeat that. Let's begin. Three, two, one, now inhale to go up. Hold the breath for a few moments. Exhale, push out. Deeply relax. Make no particular effort with the breath. But deeply relax your body, including the abdomen. So your diaphragm is able to support you with the breath at a very subtle level. seat upright again and stable. There should be some tone to the pelvic floor. We're going to practice Kapalabhati, the exhale through the nose. completely. Inhale up to suspension. Your own timing, exhale completely.
Place your hands up on your shoulders. So this is a form of Kapalabhati. It's also good for Vyanavayu, for the heart. The circulation that will go out after the practice. Also good for breaking up stagnation in the space between the shoulder blades. Let's begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Come to center. Exhale completely. And then inhale to suspension. in your own timing. And again, let your body relax. Deeply relax any unnecessary tension in the abdomen. And give your attention to the very subtle experience of the breath, which will be happening kind of on your behalf. Please shift to your Vajrasana seat, kneeling. You may want to have a block nearby, so we're going to be using it ultimately for the head. We're going to practice Korma Mudra. So that's shifting us from this Vayu in the chest and heart. We're going down now to the Apana Vayu. So getting some circulation restored when you come from sleep to early morning practice. And then looking into this Apanavayu, so we're going to support the digestive process, but also happening overnight while you were sleeping. So first, we're going to do a three-part inhale. Inhale, low third, pause. Inhale, middle third, pause. Inhale, upper third, pause. And then exhale smoothly and completely. You can rest your hands in your lap. You can also keep track of the breath if you'd like to. So begin with your own timing. Each of the pauses, so inhale, then inhale, pause, inhale, inhale, pause, inhale, inhale, pause, three times. Each of those pauses is equal to the length of the in-breath. So it's maybe inhale for three, pause for three, inhale for three, pause for three, inhale for three, pause for three. And each pause is a chance for your body to acclimate. When you breathe into the low third, think of it as the space below the belly button. 
when you're in the mid third. Think of expanding the side ribs and the back ribs. When you're in the upper third, think of it as the heart and the collarbones and the upper back also expanding. Let's do it two more times, please. In that process, then notice like the quality of the mind, what was required for your concentration, and what did the practice cultivate in you? And we're going to place a block and take that kind of concentration into Korma Mudras. So here, what I'm going to recommend is that we just inhale smoothly without any interruption. We're going to have the fists and the low belly. When you come forward, you'll be resting your head on a block. When we exhale to come down, let's also exhale smoothly without interruption. But at the bottom of the exhale, whatever exhale muscles you were using, you're gonna to totally relax them and then feel into the suction inside the body and see if perhaps that suction is a little bit more comfortable, might be a little bit longer in duration today from what we have done, might not be. Okay, so always tune into what is actually happening for you in the present. Let's begin with the inhalation. And exhale, come forward. You always inhale to come up at your own timing. Do not make yourself breathless. You can come consecutively breath to breath. So one round of Kormasana and then the next, or you can have a pause in between if you need to. Do one more. Finish that one, then again, come to relax and notice the kind of concentration that was needed 
and then the quality of the mind you're experiencing. inside any yoga props that you won't need you can set them off to the side we will use them a little bit later we're going to come back to our prostration practice and let's actually begin with a, a little bit of opening um, the upper back chest and heart and toning the lower belly so please lie on your stomach okay, as you lie on your stomach point your toes behind you Reach back to interlace your fingers, squeeze the shoulders back. Prone your lower belly, press your tailbone towards your pubic bone, energize the legs, and then inhale to lift your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your heart, and your head. Allow the exhale, so your pose is gonna rise and fall a little bit. See if you can sense the participation between these different values. So tone the low belly during the exhale. Start the inhale in the pelvis and save the upper third of the breath for the heart. And then place your hands beneath your shoulders, press up to table pose, and then sit back to kneeling. Okay, so in the prostration practice, basically we're going through this kind of squeezing, releasing, moving energy about. We do wanna circulate through the whole body. It is also a prayerful practice, a practice of humility. It's a practice of saying thank you and um, may I please, and uh, how can I serve? It's a practice of saying so many things. So please join your hands together at your heart, Anjali Mudra. And then inhale, sweep down, rise up to arrow pose. Now exhale, notice how you squeeze the low belly when you're coming forward. Place the arrow on the floor, and then flat palms, inhale. Cat becomes cow. Exhale, bow your heart. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat pose becomes child pose. Inhale, raise your palms like an arrow. Exhale, hands to the heart. We're gonna to add to the sequence. Inhale, come up. Exhale, bow forward. Notice the squeezing of the lower belly. Palms flat, inhale, cat becomes cow. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat becomes child's pose. Inhale, rise up to kneeling, hands alongside your hips. Exhale, interlace the fingers, roll your shoulders open. Inhale, little back bend. Now exhale, fold forward, squeeze the low belly, touch your forehead and then inhale, roll up to rabbit pose. Exhale, release back down. Inhale, rise up. Little back bend. 
Exhale, hands to Anjali Mudra. And we're gonna to add to that again. So inhale, raise up. Exhale, fold forward, squeeze the lower belly. Inhale, cat becomes cow. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. The child's pose. Inhale, slide up, clasp your hands. Exhale, open. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, forward for rabbit pose. Inhale to the crown of the skull. Exhale, fold down. Now place your hand by your knees. And inhale, roll to the top of your head. Exhale, release your hips to your heels. Repeat that inhale, roll to the crown of your skull. Exhale, hips to heels. One more inhale, roll to the top of your head. Exhale, hips to heels. Inhale, raise the arrow high. And exhale, hands to your heart. Tuck the toes under and push up into Uttanasana. Okay. And then hands to your hips. Please rise up to standing. Okay, so starting at the back of your mat now, join your palms together, Anjali Mudra. And then inhale the hands down, forward and up, little standing back bend. Exhale, hands to Anjali Mudra, hands to the floor, Uttanasana. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, over the toes and the knees, Pranam. Inhale, rabbit pose. Exhale, hips to your heels, squeeze the breath out. Inhale, arrow pose, raise up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, cat to cow. Inchworm. Cobra. Confirm. Cow pose. Exhale, cat becomes cow. I'm sorry, cat becomes child's pose. Inhale, slide up, interlace your fingers. Exhale, squeeze the chest and the heart. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, forward to rabbit pose. Squeeze the lower belly first. 
and then touch your hairline, come to the crown of your skull, raise the arms. Exhale, squeeze down, place your hands by your knees. Inhale to the top of your head, curl your toes under, exhale, push up to Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up to standing. Exhale, hands to the heart. And then come to mountain pose and just notice in mountain pose, okay, what is the overall feeling tone of balancing these pranas in the body? You've now also connected with pranavayu, apanavayu, of course, vyanavayu is still there. Udanavayu has been touched and samanavayu is also being included. So notice what it's like. Front of your mat for Surya Namaskar. And we're going to be using some of the one legged poses that we were doing yesterday. One of the ways that we can help to focus the Vata mind is by giving this challenge of being really balanced and having to pay close attention. So step to the front of your yoga mat. Join your hands at your heart. And then Ujjayi breath, inhale, raise the arms up. Chair pose. Breathe in. Exhale, squeeze the breath out as you press your chest against your thighs. Inhale, straighten your legs, press your palms down towards the floor. And then exhale, a long exhale, a deep and complete exhale. Okay, inhale, glide your heart forward. Let's exhale, take the left toes back, touch your left knee down, it's called Anjane Asana. Now, as you breathe in, straighten your left leg and press into your right heel. And then exhale, come down to Anjane Asana. You're squeezing the breath out, let the chest press against your right thigh. Inhale, straighten. Now bend your left knee. Your right knee can come in line with your toes. Once more, inhale to straighten. Exhale, bend your left knee to the floor. Now we're going to inhale and step into one-legged Uttanasana. So as you inhale, press off of your back foot. And then exhale, squeeze your left knee into your chest. Place your left foot next to your right foot and bow deeply towards your legs. Inhale your heart forward, we'll do the second side. So with your exhale, take your right toes back and touch your right knee down to the floor. And on the inhale, straighten your right leg, the left shin can be vertical. Keep your chest and your thigh touching. Exhale, touch your right knee down. Inhale, strengthen and lengthen your right leg. Exhale, touch your right knee down. Squeeze the low belly. Inhale, straighten your right leg. And once more, exhale to squeeze the breath out. Now we're gonna inhale, straighten the right leg and launch yourself forward to Ekapada Uttanasana. And then exhale, squeeze your right knee into your chest. And place your right foot next to your left foot. A deep bow to the legs. 
Inhale, rise up, upward hands pose. And exhale, hands to your heart. Okay, now let's use that and add into it. So inhale, raise up, root down into your heels. Exhale, chair pose. Breathe in and chair pose. Exhale over your thighs, squeeze the breath out. Inhale, slowly straighten your legs, whatever amount your hamstrings allow for. A deep and complete exhale. Okay, inhale your heart forward. Exhale, take your left toes straight back. Inhale, rise up, crescent. Exhale, arms wide, crescent. Exhale, bow forward, Ekapada Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen from your back body into your left heel. Exhale, squeeze your left knee into your chest. Inhale, lengthen your left leg back. Exhale, bend your right knee, take the left toes gently back to the floor. Inhale, downward facing dog pose. Exhale, plank pose. Inhale, seal pose. Exhale, plank. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, left foot forward. Inhale, rise to your crescent. So take the arms wide, just out to the sides. Enjoy the inhale, sense the back of the body here. And then exhale, Ekapada Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen through your right heel. And exhale, squeeze your right knee in. Inhale, slide it back. Exhale, bend your left knee, touch the toes down behind you. Okay, inhale, downward dog pose. Exhale, plank pose. Inhale, seal or upward dog pose, you can choose. Exhale, plank. And inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale, awkward foot forward, second foot forward. Inhale, glide forward. And exhale, deeply bow towards your legs. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Stand in mountain pose again, noticing how the prana is being organized in you. Noticing that. Stand really still and don't make a lot of effort even with the muscles. See if you can kind of stack the bones of your body.
Let's bring the chair onto the yoga mat for feedback. We're also going to use it to offer the shoulders. And we will also use it for the feet at a certain point in the practice. So these are the, let me just move my block. These are the poses that we're using now to, to really give Vata Dosha a chance to be more grounded, more inward. One of the benefits of, pardon me, that's a noisy chair. One of the benefits of inversions is what it does to the system of the values and to your circulation and also to the pineal and the pituitary gland, to the thyroid gland, so many things. So we're gonna pad the front of the chair and that's because it's gonna be a source of feedback to your upper back in a moment here, but it's also gonna be a place where we open the upper back first. So for some of you, what I'm gonna show you right now is a, it's a back bend in the upper back. And if you're not inverting today, you could use this practice and then lie on your back with the two blocks where you're reaching through the arms. We're gonna to try to get the base of the shoulder blades here to the edge of the chair. And so for me, it's really helpful to sit on a couple of blocks like this. Place the upper back there and then lift your hips so that your shoulder blades are on the chair and so is your head. And then we hold the seat of the chair, the back side of the seat of the chair. Place your feet so that your shins are vertical and you have good support for your hips. Lengthen your elbows towards the upper back of the chair, but also keep your elbows in at about shoulder width apart. Begin to lower your hips down slowly. lowering the hips down, there should not be any compensation to your neck or your throat. And we don't expect that your hips are going to make it all the way down to the blocks if you sat on blocks to start. And also we don't want you to be sliding off the edge of the chair. The shoulder blades are very stable on the seat of the chair. Notice if the breath is able to come down into the lower pelvis. And if you're able to keep the back of the neck long, so the neck is not in any way compromised as you lower the hips down. Use the hips until they're about the height of your knees. Release the hold you have on the back of the chair. Lower your hips down to the blocks. Rise up to Malasana. Let's call this a variation on Malasana. Bring the arms forward. You can bow the head slightly towards the floor and notice the circulation of the upper back. and bring yourself upright and let's release. So now we're gonna be taking a look at your headstand options. So one is that you're lying on your back. You have, I'll show you while kneeling, you have one block at the top of the head. If you're lying on your back, okay, second block. When you're doing this, you're also pressing the crown of the skull into the two blocks. And again, you're lying on your back so you can sense even the lumbar spine is pressing against the floor. That's just a way of simulating the crown of the skull does have some pressure on it. And that's for those of you who are not inverting. For those of you who are inverting, place your four blocks. And what you're gonna do here, that chair, I said this, I think it was Saturday or maybe it was, I don't know, Thursday, I can't remember now. 
um, the chair is gonna be feedback for you that you're not rounding your spine. When you step up towards a headstand, you're not rounding the back to go in that direction. Okay, so we are gonna prepare and some of you will have the option of lifting one leg or both legs. And some of you are gonna have the option of bringing one knee to the chest when you're in the headstand. So let's take the upper back. The head and the hands are gonna be on the floor, of course. The upper back should not be running into the chair. The chair is close enough that if you wanted to feel it, you would be able to. I'm gonna bring mine a tiny bit closer. Yeah, and then it gives you direct feedback. So you know you're not gonna push the chair over with the upper back. And then you raise one leg Possibly you raise only one leg, but some of you are gonna raise one leg and the other knee might come to your chest. Or you're gonna have both legs up straight. So the chair is not a support for your upper back to lean against. It's feedback for you about being vertical. We do keep the head pressing firmly down. We do keep the hands pressing firmly down. Keep your elbows in at shoulder width. You might choose to keep both legs straight up. You might not even have your legs lifted. You could choose one leg up and one knee into the chest. You could take both legs up from there again. for your own inner stability in the mind and in the pose. You've got both legs up, you can begin to bring one knee down towards the chest, keep the other leg really vertical. And bring the toes down to the floor, second foot down to the floor smoothly. Walk your feet back, knees back, and then come into child's pose. And you might choose to support your head with one block in child's pose. Touch the elbows down to the floor. And let the throat and your face and your tongue relax. And then walk yourself up to kneeling. Let's take this blanket off of the chair seat. I don't want it to be slippery. We're gonna be putting our feet up on the chair seat and I don't want that to be slippery for you. So put your stacks of blocks nearby and stack them so you have each two blocks are flat, okay?
Hold the toes of the chair. Place your feet on the edge of the chair. Roll the shoulders back and down. And then raise your knees, your thighs, your hips. Tuck the shoulders under. Raise your heart. This is like a high version of a bridge pose. You bring the blocks in. So what you have is a stack of blocks on the right and a stack of blocks on the left. And those stacks are organized. And then you place the edges of the sacrum. The blocks go into their triangle formation. So the edges of the sacrum go to this, onto the beveled edge of the blocks. This is called supported candlestick pose. Squeeze the upper back so the shoulders are firmly grounded, but relax your face and your tongue. Allow the breath to come down to the lower belly. It's kind of like bridge pose, but with your legs up in the air and the hips supported by the two sets of blocks. So in bridge pose, you do continue to use the upper back and the heart. And same is true here. Keeping the bridge pose strong in the upper back, set your feet to the front edge of the chair. Lift the hips and put the block aside. Sorry, it's a little bit noisy. And then lower down with your hips. Take your legs up onto the chair seat. And toss a blanket up onto your legs for a couple minutes. We're not going to do a long shavasana because I want to give us time to feel how the meditation comes from a practice like this. So rest your feet up on the upper back of the chair, shins on the seat of the chair, hips on the floor, spine on the floor. the quality of your mind. Making the mind overly active. Please glide your knees towards your chest. Your side. Up 
Prepare to be pleasantly surprised that your mind may have a natural quality of meditation. That word is called sahaj or sahaja. I said that yesterday, I think, or the day before. But come on up to your seat, please. With your right hand for Nadi Shodhana. We'll just do three rounds, which is only six breaths, but it can be very effective right now. It's inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, exhale left, slow and steady. Complete Nadi Shodhana with an exhale through the left nostril. Nadi Shodhana can have a very powerful influence, particularly following those inversions but also more powerful when our, our life is generally speaking in balance and we aren't having a lot to clean up. And then Nadi Shodhana brings us to meditation more expediently.
yourself to sit in the center of the stillness that you have created. That stillness that is larger than you, it's calling you back home. Very still. You don't need to have any obligation to finishing a thought if one comes. Rest in the stillness, keep it fresh and vital.
hold your hand to your heart. These particular days are leading towards the winter solstice. And the word solstice means uh, standing still. It's also the shortest day of the year, the longest night of the year. Maybe you come into it with a quality of peace and stillness of equanimity, upekshanam. We feel the world. We are a part of it. We are not lost in it. We don't lose ourselves or our deep inner knowing. Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste. Closing our class because it's the time that we closed the class, not because I thought your meditation needed to end. You, of course, can continue the meditation. Realize our lives that we have that opportunity, how wonderful that is, too.